First and foremost, we always like to give praise and honor to the God of Israel. I want to make sure we always mention that name because the world, our people, are blind to that name. But tonight, as my brother said, is the Day of Atonement. This is when it starts in the evening and it's going to end tomorrow evening. So, let's get right to this lesson. This day represents when Christ atoned for man's sin. Right. Or he helped man to escape the final death. When people don't understand and celebrate and take part in this atonement, they really seal themselves in the lake of fire. This is how serious it is. It ain't no playing out. All this started because of what Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden. And when they messed up in the Garden of Eden, God had to find a way to help this man, help him to recover from death. Because when Adam and Eve messed up, they were separated from God. So he came up with some laws that we that can help us recover. And these laws that we are trying to do helps us for the resurrection. So don't take this lightly. It's very important. Very important. We're going to find out how important this, this is. That's why he tells us to take part in his holy days, his high days. And this is one of them. <coughs> so we're going to get to one of his laws so we can understand what we are doing tonight. I don't want y'all just to come here. I always say this just because I say come. Now we're here for a reason. We're going to turn to Leviticus chapter 23. And we're going to start with verse 1. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 1. If you understand Leviticus and God's high days, you've got a pretty good understanding of what's going on uh, in the world and also in the future. So we got to make sure. I want to make sure that y'all understand because I'm, I'm responsible for you all. And I'm not going to have that blood on my hand not teaching y'all what, what y'all are supposed to learn from this book. So we're going to turn to Leviticus chapter 23 and we're going to get into this high day. We're going to start at verse 1 we we'll read 1 through 4 and jump to 26. Can you get it brother? Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them yes, sir. concerning the feast of the Lord which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations even these are my feasts. So these are the Lord's feasts, not the Jews. As they're going to say, y'all Jewish. No, we're not Jewish. We're from Israel. Israel got more than just one tribe in it. If you call me a Jew, that means you discredit the other 11 tribes. It's, and that's why we, we don't know what tribe we came from, so therefore we call ourselves Israel. And God will clear all that up when he get here. But put emphasis on this. These are the Lord's feasts, Jesus' feasts. <laughs> Go ahead. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Yes, sir. And holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your uh, dwellings. So the seventh day, the weekly Sabbath, is a holy day also. So these are God. Feast days or holy days. He said, do this in all your dwelling. That covered the whole world. Wherever you can get together and do this, do it. Go ahead, brother. Verse 4. Uh -huh. These are the feasts of the Lord, uh -huh. even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. When you say holy convocation, it's a church gathering. This is why we gather today on the Lord's feast. He said, which you, which you shall proclaim their season. This season, this is the season for the, for the Day of Atonement. Understand that God's calendar do not start like man's calendar in January. This calendar started in the springtime when everything is growing back. That started around April and May. That's when we count the first spring moon 
according to Jerusalem, and then we count all the way down to 14 days. That's when we start our day of atonement. I mean, day of atonement, Passover. And then we get our count for all our holy days from that point on. But as you keep learning, you'll understand that. Let's get down to this piece. Verse, jump down to verse 26. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, that shall be a day of atonement. Yes, sir. It shall be an holy convocation unto you. And ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So this is why we, we hear today. It's a day of atonement, a day of recovery, a day of escape from the final death. The final death is the lake of fire. He, puts the, he put the laws here so we can study them and most of all do them so we can escape. But most people just say, oh, that's the old law. You ain't got to do that no more. You better pay close attention to this. He said, and ye shall afflict your souls, meaning your body. You're supposed to fast. No eating or drinking on this day, period. Like I said, if you got to deal with that, you work out your own salvation, you got medical issues or whatnot, that's on you. You handle that. But I'm going to tell you what the book said. And he said, often the offer made by fire, we don't do that because Christ died once. We don't take up animal sacrifice. We're going to find, it, find this out. But let's get to the instructions of the feast. Go ahead. 28. 26, 28. Go ahead. And ye shall do no work in that same day. Uh -huh. For it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. So you don't supposed to work. You don't supposed to work. And I tell you, that's why we give the calendar out early. So if you got a job, Make sure you can get off. And this one right here is very, 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 very important. Go ahead. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. You see how serious that is? If you don't afflict yourself, meaning if you don't fast, if you eat anything, if you drink anything, you're going to be cut off from the house of Israel. That means that you ain't got no chance of the resurrection with the Father. Go ahead, brother. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. You see how serious it is? He said, I will destroy you. I'm going to kill you. Because when the resurrection come up, he's the one going to have the final say so. If you going to lick a fire or are you going to come with him? So we got to make sure we got some we got to make sure we got some roots in this thing. We got to grow into this. Grow some legs into this. A lot of times you don't understand. It. Some of us been here for some years. Some of us this is our first time. But as you keep coming, you'll understand how serious this is. He said, "I will destroy you," meaning that final death. I will destroy you. Go ahead. He shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generation and all your dwellings. A statue forever. How long is forever? No time limit on it. In all your dwellings. Anywhere y'all at. If you got these instructions in the book and you can follow them, you got to do them. You got to do them. Go ahead. <clears throat> it shall be under you a Sabbath of rest. Yes, sir. And ye shall afflict your soul in the ninth day of the month of evening. From evening unto evening shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. This is why we're here the evening to the next evening. This is what we're supposed to be doing. Afflict your soul through fasting and prayer. Affliction is for a person, I know for me, if I can't eat, that's afflicting. Mm -hmm. If I can't drink, that's afflicting to me. So, we're going to give you the definition through the scripture what he means by afflicting. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 1. Everything must be clear. So you can go back and you can study this for yourself. I believe that this is a small thing to a giant, which is God, for us to fast. No food and water for one day. Small thing for salvation. But what we're going to get in the first resurrection. Some people, so, some people being led by their bellies, 
They can't understand why I got to fail. Why I can't, why I got to do all this stuff. Because the Lord said it. He owns you. You bought with a price. What price is that? His blood. He died on the cross for you. And you sit up in your little simple mind thinking about why well, I got to do this. You better follow this book. So you can understand how you can make it in. This is a, this is a way of escape from the final death. He recovered us. He making sure that I'm going to give this man every opportunity to escape this level fire through these laws. And this is what he's doing. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 1. Let's define the flick of the soul. Your body is the soul. Verse 1, go ahead. Cry aloud, spare not. Yes, sir. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show thy people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. This is what we're doing. We're crying aloud. We're teaching. So you can understand what is sin. If you don't know what's sin, then how can you do right? How can I do right? Yes, we got to read this book. Instead of clothing and saying, this is my Bible, go ahead. Yet they seek me daily mm -hmm. and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook and forsook not the ordinance of their God. Yes, sir. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Wherefore have we fast, say they, mm -hmm. and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? See what he says. So wherefore we fast, and they see not. Wherefore we afflicted our soul. Afflicting your soul is fasting. Taking away food and water from your body. This is the instructions. Go ahead. And thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure and excite all your labors. See, when you're fasting, you got to do it correctly. Don't do all your labors and your pleasures on this day. Put all that stuff aside because this day we said to the Lord, He died. He died on the cross for us. He, we bad the sins of the world. You think he would, he would take a part of his pleasures on that day, on that cross day? He, he hollered out to the Father, take this cup away from me. You can tell he was suffering. So you telling me you can't suffer for a day? Not eating? Come on, you don't deserve salvation if you feel that way. And most of the world can't see this. They think we're trying to put you in a cult. They think we're trying to control you. No, we are trying to put you in the right direction according to the laws. That's it. Afflict your soul. Go ahead, brother. Verse 4. Behold, ye fast for strife and <clears throat> debate. Yes, sir. And to smite with the fists of wickedness. Mm -hmm. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. So he tells you, don't fast with strife, all this wickedness, all this talking, going back and forth, arguing with anybody. This is the wrong way you fast. You fasting in vain because he don't recognize that. You got to put your mind on this word of God so he can recognize you. Go ahead. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul. This is the day right here. The day he chose this. The day of atonement to afflict your soul. This is why we're here. Go ahead. Is it, it, is, is it to bow down his head as a bulrush mm -hmm. and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Yes, sir. Would thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? See, we got to make this day acceptable. We got to. And I know it, it takes some time to work your way into this thing because our flesh, we battle with our flesh back and forth. But God knows in your mind that if you're trying or not, it's on you. That's why Philippians said every man got to work out his own salvation. That's one and two. Everybody. It ain't once for all. Everybody's an individual when it comes to God. Everybody's going to stand before God for their sins. Everybody. So we got to understand that this day is a day of affliction. That we remember what he done for us. The world right now ain't gonna remember tomorrow because they're gonna keep going on and on and on, doing whatever they wanna do. And they don't understand how serious this is. Very serious. Let's go to um, finish with that. Go ahead. Verse 6. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? 
Yes, sir. To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, mm -hmm. and that she break every yoke. This is the fast. So you can, you can help you break all those burdens. And I look at people today, they're suffering today in their body. They're suffering today in their finances. They're suffering today with their children. They're suffering today with every situation in life, but they have no way of escape. Then when they suffer right now, then it comes judgment. You suffer on this side of the flesh and blood. Now you're going to suffer in the lake of fire. Well, I don't want to do both. I don't want to do both. I know I'm going to suffer on this side. So I must do what the Lord says so I can escape the lake of fire. That's what we're trying to do, escape. He put these laws here so we can recover ourselves. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 16, verse 2. Let's understand how the priests handled the day of atonement. So when we read these scriptures in the New Testament, it won't seem foreign to you. You must understand the old before you go into the new. Amen, bro. Amen. So we got to understand how they handled the day of atonement, how the priests of God handled it, so we can understand in the New Testament when we read certain, certain stuff like the veil of the temple was red. Or you know, all, we don't offer animal sacrifices no more. Instead of saying that we, instead of saying that God had got rid of the law, because of those sacrifices, he had to get rid of the law. When you say that, boy, you don't you, you, you draw on fire with the, with the lake of fire. You don't even understand. The laws are going to be the one to set you free. So we must understand how the priests handled the law, handled the day of atonement, excuse me. Leviticus chapter 16 and verse 2. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother. Yes, sir. That he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, mm -hmm. which is upon the ark, that he die not, for I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Understand that God had a temple, and he had the mercy seat, which is the ark of the covenant, uh, a box where he talked to man on that box. He talked to Moses on that box. It was a veil, like a curtain. It separated him from, it said the curtain separated man. Until one time a year that this priest had to go behind the curtain and offer blood sacrifices for the man. This is veil. And he telling uh, Aaron, he said, Aaron, thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil of before. He couldn't go all times before that. It was one particular time he had to go before that. And this is the time right here. To offer up sin and sacrifice for him first and then for the congregation. Go ahead. He said, excuse me, he said that upon us, that he died not. You got to approach God right. All this, this false, this lie doctrine, what it got in the church is saying, that come as you are. Don't you believe that? If you come as you are with God, he'll kill you. And you don't know why. You got to understand how to approach this God. And that's what he told Aaron. Don't you come behind this veil anytime, only one time you do that. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with the young bullock for a sin offering. Yes, sir. And a ram for a burnt offering. Go ahead. He shall put on the holy linen coat. Mm -hmm. And he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh. Yes, sir. And shall be gritted with the linen girdle. Mm -hmm. And with the linen myrtle shall he be attired. The linen mitre. Go ahead. These are holy garments. Therefore, Shall he wash his flesh in water and so put them on? So he had to be clean. He had to have a set of clothes to come before the Lord. Linen breeches. This was the attire of the priest. He had to put on a mitre on his head or a hat on his head. This is what he had to wear. He couldn't approach him like he wanted to. Go ahead. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. So he's taking two cup, two goats, one for the sin offering and one for the burnt offering. Go ahead. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. So Aaron had offered this offering of this blood, this bullock for himself. He got to get forgiven for his sin before he approached God. 
He got to get his, his self right, the priest right, before he approaches him. Go ahead. And make an atonement for himself and for his house. Mm -hmm. And he shall take the two. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. He shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So you always have to take the two goats and present it for the Lord. Anytime you ask for forgiveness, forgiveness, you always got to have blood. Always. Just like Christ's blood is sufficient for all right now. Back then they had to have animals for blood to have their sins forgiven. Always. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Verse 8. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, mm -hmm. one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. So we're talking about lots, like drawing straws. Whoever got the longest one, they go first. That's all I'm saying, lots. So he had to pick one of the goats for the sin offering, pick one of the goats for the other offering. Go ahead. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell mm -hmm. and offer him for a sin offering. Yes, sir. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. Understand that these two, two goats represent, represent Jesus. What he did. Down on the cross and also going back to the Father. We don't understand that. But it always got to be blood there. Jump out of verse 15. Go ahead. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering. That is for the people, and bring his blood within the veil, and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock, and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat, and before the mercy seat. See, this, this one was for the people. He had to kill them. Like Christ bared the sins upon him for the whole world. This is what, what he trying to do. All these holy days from back then, if you just think about plugging Christ in what he goes at, He's doing the same thing. Nothing changes. It's right. just you replace Christ, replace the ghost with Christ. Christ's blood. Nothing changes. Go ahead. 16. Uh -huh. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel. And because of their transgressions and all their sins, and so shall he do for the uh, tabernacle of the congregation yes, sir. that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. So he had to make an atonement, have a sacrifice to have their sins forgiven with this, with this goat. Go ahead. And that shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place mm -hmm. until he come out and have made an atonement for himself and for all his household and for all. So the priest had to make an atonement for himself and his household. Make sure they are clean. Make sure their sins are forgiven. Go ahead. And he shall go out unto the altar that is before the Lord and make an atonement for it and shall take of the blood of the bullock and of the blood of the goat, put it up on the horns of the altar round about. Yes, sir. And he shall sprinkle all the blood upon it with his finger seven times, mm -hmm. and cleanse it, and hallow it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. This is how we got our sins for, got our sins forgiven. We have to lay the foundation. You got to know what went on back then, so when you go in the New Testament, you won't jack it up. Everybody won't just fast forward so quick. Fast forward. No, you need to understand what went on in the beginning, so when you get to the New Testament, you'll understand. That's why we spend so much time reading. Go ahead. Verse 20. And when he had made an end of reconciling the holy place mm -hmm. and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. And so you got to bring this live goat. Go ahead. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat, confess over him all the iniquity of the children of Israel yes, sir. and all their transgressions and all their sins putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Understand that this live goat that he put his hand on a fit man into the wilderness represents Jesus Come when he went back to the right hand of the Father. Amen. Amen. This, all this played, all, you just understand 
how it went down before Christ stepped on the scene in the flesh. Go ahead. Verse 22. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. Yes, sir. So we got to understand what this live goat represents. Let's go to John chapter 1 and verse 29. Oh, this is very important. Jesus is the king. When he said those sacrifices was a shadow of good things to come, who do you think the shadow was? Christ. These animals was a representation of Christ. And when he came and did it once, you ain't got to do it no more. But this is how it went down in Israel. How they got their sins forgiven. In this day and time, well, nobody had no cattle today, boy. It's so much sin going on right now. So he had to make an easier way coming through his blood. So you can stand in the comfort of your own home and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood over this. Forgive me for this. This is what I mean. You hear so many people say, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. They don't even understand what pleading the blood is. Or how it came about. Or what it represents. Verse 29. Let's see what these goats represent. A goat is nothing but a lamb. Same thing. John chapter 1 verse 29. Go ahead. The next day John sees Jesus coming unto him. Mm -hmm. And said, Behold the Lamb of God. Oh, okay. Which taketh away. The sins of the world. You see what he said? He came the Lamb of God. He represented that Lamb we just read in Leviticus. He put it on that lago. He took him off in the wilderness so he can atone for our sins. This is what Jesus represented by the blood of these ghosts. Let's go to Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. Let's see who this scapegoat represents. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. We gotta lay the foundation. Because these dumb preachers go in this New Testament and just rip it all up with lies. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Let's see who this, this scapegoat represents. These two goats represent Jesus. Period. You have some theologians. You're going to hear that the scapegoat represents uh, a Hazel or Satan. Right. Where have you ever heard of God say, I'm going to give you these sins, Satan, so you can take them away? Satan trying to get you to sin. He trying to get you to sin. So don't think of that. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. Go ahead. But God commendeth his love toward us. Yes, sir. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yes, sir. That's that scapegoat. He represented this scapegoat. He died for us. Go ahead. Much more then, being not justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. See, this is the recovery. You got recovered through the blood. If Christ didn't come and die on the cross for us, we could never escape this lake of fire. No. We have to follow this to the T to escape. There's just one on the day. All of them are very, very important. These are the orders so you can understand for yourself. Go to Leviticus and get yourself, Leviticus chapter 23, get yourself familiar with this. So you'll know for yourself. You can read this, you got a Bible, you read this every day if you want to. Make sure you know. Go ahead. Verse 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. You see what he said? But if, when we was enemies, do you understand that? Enemies. That means you were cut off. I was cut off. Adam and Eve was cut off. All of us cut off from God. We were enemies at the time. So he said, for we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. This is the only way we can get in. If we follow this holy day, we follow all God's law. Go ahead, brother. Much more. Read, read, read that over again. Okay, sorry. Uh -huh. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God 
by the death of his son. Yes, sir. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. This is the life goal. When he died on the cross, he was saved by his life. His life was taken so we can have the right to eternal life. This is why we do these things. Because we were yet enemies. Mankind, man, period. If you ain't following the law, you are enemy. Period. Point blank. Go ahead. And not only so, but we also join God throughout the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have.